Hello, I'm Kath. This is Made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me for this video, which is my October makes video. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing everything I made in October, both on the sewing front and the knitting front too. And I had quite a busy month actually, so I've got quite a few makes to share and I'm really looking forward to sharing them all with you. And what I think what I'll do is I'll talk about my sewing makes first and I'll put my knitting at the end of the video. But before I get started on sharing all my makes, I'll kick the video off as ever with what I'm wearing today from my handmade wardrobe. And today I've got a dress on, but I don't reach for a great deal. I think I made it a couple of years ago and I haven't had it out a lot. And you might recognise it from the neckline because it's got quite an unusual neckline. It is this pattern here. It is the Wilder Gown Pattern by Friday Pattern Co. So it's a very pretty woven dress pattern and I think the neckline detail is what makes it a bit different to other patterns. It's got a raglan sleeve bodice and when you sew up the bodice you end up with this kind of large sort of tube around the top and then you fold over the top to make it into a channel and then you draw it in with a necktie to create this sort of pretty gathered detail around the neck and then when you go down towards the main area of the dress it's quite loose fitting. You can either make it as a blouse um, or a mini dress with one gathered skirt tier, or a full length maxi dress with two gathered tiers. So it's quite a pretty pattern with a few different options built into it. And the version I'm wearing today is the mini dress option. And I've lengthened the sleeves to make them full length sleeves, just to make it quite nice and wintry and cozy. And the fabric I made this version in is a viscose fabric. So it's quite nice and lightweight. So there's not too much bulk in this gathering around the neckline. I don't think I'd necessarily enjoy this dress in a thicker fabric. I think I might find it too much around the neckline. Yeah, it's a really pretty viscose fabric. It came from Rainbow Fabrics quite a while ago. It's got this black base and lots of pretty um, flowers in different colours on it. So I quite like it for winter. I've got it paired today with some black tights and it goes quite nice with a black cardigan on top. So nice and wintry. I'm not going to talk in too much detail about this dress and sizing and adjustments and how I find it because I actually talk more in depth about this dress in my video last week which I'll link up above. So if you want to hear all about this dress then watch that video but for now I'll just yeah put that picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on and I'll move on to talking about what I've been making in the month of October. So the first make I wanted to share in this video is I think my favourite make from October. And it might actually be one of my favourite makes in this entire year too. It's a pattern that I really, really enjoyed sewing up and I love how it's turned out. And actually it's a pattern that's new to me and also it's a new to me pattern company too. And it is this pattern and pattern company here. It is the Dovestone Dress Pattern by Izzo Sew Studio. So I think Izzo Sew Studio is a fairly new pattern company. And I hadn't come across them before until the Dovestone Dress was released earlier this year. And a few people that I follow on Instagram were pattern testers for the Dovestone dress and I saw their versions up on Instagram and I thought they looked really, really beautiful. So it inspired me to go over to the Izzo Sew Studio website and take a look at their patterns and in particular at the Dovestone dress pattern and I thought I'd really like to give it a go myself. So I'll show you the line drawings for the Dovestone dress. It's a really lovely woven dress pattern with these sort of strappy straps. It's designed to be um, fitted at the bust and then it flows out loosely and you can either take it down to the ground for like a full length maxi version with this front slit or you can make it as a knee length version. And what is really cool about this pattern is you make this really, really long tie um, and then the bodice has channels in it and you sort of feed that tie through to create the shoulder straps and then you can tie it in different ways to create different effects. So. It's a bit of a versatile pattern that can look differently depending on the different ways you tie it. In the pattern envelope it explains different ways you can tie it. So yeah, I thought that would be quite fun to try. It's quite a summery dress, I guess, but I thought it might also be quite nice as a dressy winter dress too, if you styled it right for kind of like a winter party. And it's got a really good size range too. The size range goes from a UK 6 up to a UK 34, and there are um, B and D cup options for this pattern. So I decided to make my version as a size six. Um, I had a look at the sizing and my bust, which I thought was a critical measurement because it's designed to be fitted there and then it's a bit more flowy um, when you get further down the body. 
So my bust would put me in between a size six and a size eight. Um, I've got a 32 inch bust and the size six was for a 31 inch bust. And the size eight was for a 32 and a half inch bust. So it actually would put me slightly closer to a size eight. But when I had to look at the finished garment measurements and also other people's versions on Instagram, I thought I'd rather size down than size up and end up with a bit more fitted. And actually that's turned out really well. I think if I'd have made the size eight, there might be a bit too much fabric around the bust area. So I'm glad I did opt for the smaller size and I went for the B cup option. So I'll show you my version. And I don't think it looks much on the hanger because it just kind of hangs down because it's in a really swishy viscose fabric. So you can't really see the shape of it or anything, but this is my version. Um, you can kind of see the V-neck front there and you can see the little channels the ties feed through. And I made the full length maxi length version so you can see the slit there. And the fabric I made my version in is a really pretty viscose chalet fabric. This is one of the Minerva exclusive viscose chalets and I was gifted it in exchange for a blog post that's now up on their website. So I'll link the fabric and the blog post down below. I really love this fabric. It's got kind of like a snake print vibe going on, as you can see, in different tones of blacks and greys. And there's also a little bit of soft pink in there, which I really liked. And I think I said this before when I shared the fabric initially, the pink tones just make the fabric feel like it's glowing and I think adds a bit more depth to it and a bit of warmth. So I really love this fabric and it was so nice to sew with. Um, it didn't snag once, um, which was really lovely. And it's just got a lovely drape to it. So I think it works really well for a sort of floor length, swishy dress. So this is my version. Um, when I made it, I originally lengthened it by an inch at the length and shorten line on the pattern. But actually I found it came up quite long and I'm five foot six for reference. So I ended up taking that inch back out. So I think for me being five foot six, the length of the dress was just about right. But it was a really lovely sew. I wasn't sure what to expect from the Iso Sew Studio instructions because it was a new to me pattern, but the instructions are really clear. There's lots of nice drawings included. So it really holds your hand through the process. And it came together surprisingly quickly, I found for a floor length dress. And it was really fun, that final stage where you thread the um, tie through and tie it up and suddenly it comes together from being kind of like a billowy piece of fabric into actually a fitted dress. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. So I'll put a couple of pictures up of me wearing it. In this first picture, I've tied it so it kind of cinches in right at my natural waist. Um, and then I also tried tying it so it fits more as an empire line and sort of pulls in around under the bust and then flows out from there. So I'll put a picture in of that um, way of styling it too. So they look a bit different, but I really love both versions. So in terms of fabric requirements for this dress, I ordered the amount of fabric specified by the pattern. So for the maxi length version, view A, it states you need for my size three meters of fabric if the fabric's 1.5 meters wide, which is what this fabric was. And I really needed that full three meter length. The pattern pieces, the way they're cut out is you don't have a separate bodice and skirt pattern piece. It's one long pattern piece to cover the whole of the bodice and the skirts, so the whole length of the dress. So they are very long pieces and you need this, the room to be able to cut those out. So I did need the full three meters of fabric. So it is quite a fabric hungry pattern, I guess, but you do get a maxi length dress. So there's quite a lot of fabric needed there to reach down to the ground, but it was a lovely sew. I really enjoyed sewing. I'd definitely be up for sewing more Iso Sew Studio patterns in future. And I'd love to sew another version of the Dovestone dress because yeah, I love how it's turned out. I think I'm gonna really enjoy wearing this one. I think it's got a bit of a wintry vibe to it with these cool colors. So I'd love to wear it maybe to winter party where I dressed it up with maybe like a little black shawl or something like that. But I think it'll be great for on a summer holiday too. So it'll definitely be packing it in my suitcase next year if we go somewhere hot as well. So yeah, very enjoyable sew. And I definitely recommend um, the Dovestone dress pattern by Izzo Sew Studio. So the next makes I've got to share are actually two garments that I sewed up both using the same fabric. And recently I've been really trying to use up all of my older fabric remnants because I think over the years I've accumulated quite a few fabric remnants, either where I ordered a bit too much fabric um, in for the initial project, so I was left with quite a large piece left over, or sometimes where a project has just taken less fabric than I expected, so again I ended up with a fabric remnant. And I've been trying to find use of them rather than having them sit in my fabric suitcase, um, not really being loved and enjoyed. And so on more recent projects, if I've ended up with a decent sized fabric remnant, 
I've been trying to think of a use for it straight away and trying to actually sew that second garment up rather than just popping the fabric remnant away again in my fabric suitcase, maybe never to see the light of day again. So that is what I did with this fabric here, which is a fabric that I bought earlier this year and finally got round to sewing up what I wanted to sew with it this October. And it is this really gorgeous French terry fabric that I got from Guthrie Garni. And this is their Chica Cheetah print fabric. So they originally released the Chica Cheetah print, which is such a lovely print, I think, on a viscose base quite a while ago. And I admired the fabric at the time, but I wasn't sure what I'd make with it on a viscose base. And then earlier this year, when they had their birthday celebration month, they re-released the fabric, but on a French cherry base. And I just thought it would make such a pretty sweatshirt. So I snapped some up to be able to make my own sweatshirt with the Chica Cheetah fabric. And I got in this gorgeous colour, which I originally thought was a navy blue, but actually when I received it, it surprised me because it actually has a bit more of a sort of deep purple colour to it. So I'd say it's more of like a navy blue slash indigo colour. But it's so lovely. I love all the pops of colour. I just think it's such a pretty print. And I got the matching ribbing too, as you can see, to make this sweatshirt. So that is the first project I wanted to make with the fabric. I think I got 1.5 metres of the fabric and then a bit extra of the ribbing. I decided to make um, this pattern here, the Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweatshirt pattern. It's one of my favourites. And actually, when Guthrie Garni released this fabric, they released it as a sewing society kit um, with the Jarrah sweatshirt. And when I saw it made up by Lauren as a Jarrah sweatshirt, I just thought I want to make that version up too. So that is what I did. I sort of copied the kit, but I didn't need to buy the kit because I already had my trusty Jarrah pattern, which is very old now. And I've had to patch up quite a lot down the sides because it's definitely falling apart and I've got loads of different versions in here that I've traced out. So it's quite a, yeah, quite a meaty pattern envelope. So I made this version the model's wearing here with the tie detail, the sweatshirt cuffs and a classic round neck. And this is my Jarrah sweatshirt and the lovely Chica Cheetah fabric. It was a really enjoyable sew. I find the Jarrah sweatshirt comes together really nicely. I always make the size zero based on my bust measurement. My waist and hips would put me as a size four, so a couple of sizes larger, but the jar is designed to be quite straight fitting and it's a bit oversized. So I've never found I needed to grade out. Um, it doesn't cling on the hips or anything. The only one little adjustment I made to the pattern other than to lengthen it slightly because I do find it comes out a little bit cropped on me. So I've always lengthened it a little bit. Is I added a little facing on the back of the ties, as you can see. You'll just, the jar is designed just to be turned under and hemmed. But I thought with a tie detail, when you tie it up, um, if you did have the, um, just the hemming, you'd be able to see on the back the kind of white French terry. Um, so I thought if I if I added a little facing, and um, that'll mean that both sides of the tie had the fabric on, it looks a bit smarter. Um, I just made this little facing using a, using a method I figured out myself quite a while ago. I think Lauren did actually do a hints and tips for video for the Jarrah sweatshirt when she released the Sewing Society kit, sharing her way of making a facing, which may well be better than my way. Um, I've used this method a couple of times before, so I just did it, have done it before, and it turns out okay. So yeah, I love my Jarrah sweatshirt. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I haven't actually worn it a lot yet because the weather's only just got cooler this week, so I haven't been reaching for sweatshirts a lot until this last week, but I'm really looking forward to wearing this one. I'm just going to really enjoy pairing it with a pair of jeans. Um, it's just such a pretty print, I think, so I was really glad to be able to get hold of some of this fabric because I think it did sell out quite quickly. So that is my first make with this lovely Chica Cheetah French Terry fabric. And then I was quite surprised. I actually had a decent amount of that fabric left after I cut out the Jarrah sweatshirt. I think I needed the full 1.5 meters for the length of the sleeves and to be able to fit all those pattern pieces on. But I think I ended up with a decent amount of fabric down the side. So I had to think about what I might be able to use the fabric for and what I might enjoy also wearing in that fabric. And what I decided was to make a shorts version of this pattern, which I've never done before, actually, which is the True Bias Hudson Pants pattern, which is my favourite jogging bottoms pattern. I love the Hudson Pants. I've got quite a few pairs. It's kind of like a low rise, slim fit jogging bottom pattern with pockets added in at the front here with a little pocket detail. Um, so what I thought I'd do was I thought I'd just adjust the pattern pieces slightly so they weren't so close fitting on the thigh and then just take them down to a shorts level. So I made myself a little pair of Hudson Pants shorts and here they are. 
And I really love how they turned out, actually. It was quite fun to make them. I used the ribbing fabric, the matching ribbing for the pocket detail here. So they've got little pockets. I didn't add on the optional um, drawstring. You can add a drawstring around the waist, but I thought I'd keep it simple because I wasn't sure what colour cord I would add if I did add a little drawstring with this fabric. I do have some pink cords in my little stash of different cords, but I thought it might just be too much like pink cords. Um, so I thought I'd keep it simple, but yeah, they're quite a nice little sew and I just managed to squeeze them out the leftover fabric. I really didn't have much left at all after I made these, but they just about fit on the fabric. So that was nice. Um, a little pair of Hudson pants shorts. So I'll put a picture up so you can see what they look like on. I think I'll probably wear them as loungewear mostly and they'll be nice and comfy for relaxing in the house in the summer. So it's probably one of these things I'll put away for now and wear next year. But I was just glad to be able to use up the fabric and not have it hanging around because it's such pretty fabric. Um, and I guess I could even wear it together with the sweatshirt and have a little cord set. That'll be an option too. That might be quite cute for a summer's day, I guess, because it's quite a lightweight French terry. So that'll work well with the jumper too. So yeah, there's my Hudson pants. I think for the Hudson pants, I usually make the size two. Um, my waist would put me as a size zero. My hips would put me as a size four. I think the first time I made these, I just thought, right, let's just go down the middle and make the straight size two and they seem to fit fine. But like I said, I did adjust slightly at the bottoms just to bring them slightly out so they didn't cling too much to my thigh at the bottom when I made them. But yeah, that is my extra make. I could squeeze out the Chicka Cheetah fabric, a little pair of Hudson pants shorts. So I mentioned earlier in the video that I've recently been having a look through my older fabric remnants that I've had left over from other projects and figuring out whether I can squeeze another garment out of those remnants. And my next two makes are both made using older fabric remnants where I had a look and found I had just enough to make another garment. And they're both using fabrics I really love. So I was really happy to be able to squeeze another garment out of those fabrics. And I have made two t-shirts and I made them both using the same pattern, which is this one here. It is the Agnes top pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. So I really like this top pattern. It's designed to be like a close fitting jersey top pattern. And it's sort of my go-to top pattern where I want something that's quite a relaxed, easy to wear jersey top that is on the close fitting side. So I'll show you the line drawings. I particularly like to make this version here that has this scoop neck and a long sleeve. But if I'm making just a t-shirt, I'll just crop off the sleeve to short sleeve length. So it's a very easy adjustment. There are a couple of other versions you can make, like this ruched sleeve version. I never actually tried that one because I wasn't sure it would suit me. And you can add a little bit of ruching on the front of the scoop neckline too. But I do love this classic version here. And the Agnes top pattern has been re-released by Tilling the Buttons in a larger size range. Now it used to have a fairly limited size range, but it's now available in a UK 6 up to a UK 34, which takes you up to a bust of 60 inches. That's really good. So yeah, I had just enough of two fabrics to be able to squeeze out two Agnes t-shirts. And I think because it is a close fitting top pattern, the pattern piece are fairly small. So I wouldn't have been able to fit a more boxy t-shirt um, for these fabric remnants. But my first version is this one here. And I really love this t-shirt. I think it's quite classic. I guess it has, gives me a bit of a French sort of vibe with sort of Breton style stripes, I guess. And I made it out of this cotton jersey fabric. I originally used this fabric to make, I think, a um, molly top by Sew Over It. Um, it's really lovely, actually. When you look at it close up, it's got this little fleckiness to the navy stripes and all different colours, which I think is quite pretty. Um, I originally got this fabric from Lily and Mimi Fabric Shop, who I think, unfortunately, are currently in the process of closing down. I think they've got some good deals on at the moment, so I'll link their website down below in case you fancy having a browse of their closing down sale. It's a lovely quality fabric and I was really happy to be able to make this kind of classic t-shirt. I know I'll get a lot of wear out of it. I don't think a navy and white striped t-shirt will ever go out of style, I guess. Um, you might notice though, I didn't use the scoop neckline from the Agnes top. I actually borrowed the neckline from a different pattern for this t-shirt. And I borrowed the neckline from a free pattern, which is this one here. It is the Mandy Boat Tea pattern by Tasuti. So I'll link it down below. You can just download it for free on the Tasuti Fabrics website. It's for a looser fit drop shoulder jersey top, but it's got this really nice boat neckline. And the way you sew it, it ends up with a really nice finish to it. You use a twin needle to stitch it down. It does create a lovely finish. So I buy that neckline. I already had the pattern pieces traced out with the Agnes body and this neckline, because I've made this hack before. I just make the standard Agnes in size two, which pretty much fits my measurements. And then it's quite easy just to trace on 
the boat neckline. So yeah, I really love how it's turned out. I think it's a really classic t-shirt that will go with a lot of things. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. Yeah, I was just really happy to be able to use up that fabric scrap and there really wasn't much left after making this t-shirt. I was glad I had enough fabric to be able to do the stripe matching and everything. So I've got stripe matching down the side. Um, and yeah, I just think it'd be nice basic for my wardrobe, I guess. That is my first t-shirt I made using the Agnes top pattern and a fabric remnant. And then my second remnant is a bit more jazzy, I guess, than that one. This is my second t-shirt I made. And as you can see, I went for the classic scoop neckline on this version with the neckband. And this is a lovely fabric. Um, this sort of, sort of charcoal grey colour background, which isn't a colour I've got a lot of in my wardrobe, with this really, really cute leopard print on. It's another cotton jersey. And the gold leopard print has glitter on, which I thought was really pretty. Um, I originally used this fabric to make a Kylo wrap dress by Named Clothing. I made a sort of three quarter length sleeve knee length version. And I really enjoy wearing that. It feels like a dressy dress. So it's one I'd maybe wear out for a meal in the evening. But I think this will be more of a casual top I can pair with just some jeans um, and just add a bit of sort of, yeah, add a little bit of leopard print to an outfit. So again, I made it in the size two. Um, I think I lengthened the body slightly on the Agnes. I quite like it coming down a bit longer. I often tuck it into jeans or a skirt. So it's nice to have plenty to tuck in so it wouldn't pop out as well. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing this one too. Again, it was just really nice to have enough fabric to be able to squeeze out this top um, and make use of that remnant that had been sitting around in my fabric suitcase for absolutely ages. So those are my two Agnes tops using fabric remnants. It was really nice to get them sewn up. So the next make that I've got to share is, I think, another one of my favourites from this month. And it is another dress. And I do love sewing and wearing dresses. So I guess it's not a big surprise that the Dovestone dress and this dress are two of my favourites from my October makes. But this is the dress that I made using this pattern here, which is the Zoe Tank and Dress pattern by True Bias. I really like True Bias patterns. I always find them really enjoyable to sew up and very comfy to wear to, and I really like the style of them. And this one is a really good one, I think. So it's a, for a tank and dress, and it's quite a fitted silhouette to it. It's a jersey pattern. So this is the tank, it's very fitted at the bust and the waist and the hips. The dress is fitted, I think, at the bust and waist and then sort of tapers out and it's like a maxi length dress that ends up quite swishy at the bottom. And I've made the tank top a few times and I think it's such a great basic. Um, I've really enjoyed wearing it in the summer, but I also think it'll be great for layering in winter with like a sweatshirt over the top. It's got this V-neckline, but True Bias has also released on their website a free add-on so you can mix up the neckline. There's also now a scoop neck option, I think a square neck option, a slightly higher neck option, which is quite cool. So it makes it quite a versatile pattern that you can make in lots of different ways, I think. But having made the tank top a few times, I was really keen to give the dress a go. And I had in my mind the idea of making a really great basic sort of jersey dress for summer that'll be nice and comfortable and I could just pull on. Um, and I really li like the idea of shortening it and turning it into like a mini dress because I couldn't see myself so much making or wearing the maxi dress version. So I had that in my mind this summer um, and then it's, I've got to the end of summer and I hadn't made it, but I thought there's no reason why I can't make it on October. I'll enjoy wearing it next year. So that is what I decided to do. Or oh, I should mention the sizing on this pattern too. There's a really good size range. I've got the US 0 to 18 version. But there's also a 14 to 32 size range as well. But here is my Zoe dress um, in a sort of mini length, as you can see. I went for the classic V-neck option. Hopefully you can see it at the front. The back has more of a sort of round scoop neck. You don't have the V at the back. And I made it in this gorgeous fabric. I'll hold it up close so you can see. It is a tensile rib knit that I got from Minerva. I've sewn with this fabric a couple of times before. I've actually got a Zoe tank in the sort of shell colourway, which is like a creamy colour. Also, I've also made a dress, another, what dress was that? It was a deer and doe dress, the orage dress, in the deep red colourway of this fabric. So I knew it was really lovely fabric and I thought it would make a great sort of swishy, easy to wear summer dress. I'll link this fabric down below. It does come in a, in a few colourways. I've also made a Freya top in it for winter and that's lovely too. So yeah, I really love it. Um, but yeah, I really fancied this black version. So this is my Zoe dress and it's sewed up really nicely. In terms of sizing, um, I went for, I traced a size zero at the bust, a size two at the waist and size four at the hips based on my measurements. Um, I then shortened the dress um, 
by I think I showed the dress originally by 11 inches but instead of taking the just cutting the pattern piece off the bottom and trimming it like that I took the um, length out somewhere a bit further up because I didn't want to lose the fullness of the skirt because I wanted it to be quite a swishy mini dress and if I cropped it off it wouldn't have had the same width when you got down to the bottom but I did end up shortening it a little bit more I think I originally took 11 inches off the maxi length and then I shortened it by a further three inches because when I held the pattern piece up I wasn't exactly sure where I'd sit and I didn't want to cut it too short to start with and end up with a very short mini dress so I thought better to shorten it a little bit later so yeah, that how many inches of that in total I took off? I think, yeah, 14 inches I took off from the maxi dress, length, maxi dress length to bring it up to more of a mini length. And it set up really nicely. The only other adjustment I ended up making was these, um, the um, straps are designed to go all the way round um, and with just a seam at the bottom here. But I actually ended up having to lengthen the, sorry, shorten the straps at the top here because this fabric is lovely and drapey, but when it gets towards a dress, it ends up being quite heavy. It's got a bit of weight to it, this fabric. And I felt it was pulling the straps down a bit, um, a bit too much. The straps were pulling and it ends up being a bit low. So I ended up sort of trimming the straps off and just taking a bit of length out of the strap just um, up here at the shoulder. So it has got a little shoulder seam now on the strap, which it wouldn't have had unless I'd had to shorten it. But I'm glad I made that adjustment because now I feel like it hangs to the right place. Um, obviously I've got the vest top version so I know how that one fits and I haven't needed to shorten the straps in that one because it just clings to the body and doesn't pull down but with the dress and I guess it's quite swishy at the bottom so there's a bit of a weight of fabric there I did find I needed to shorten those straps slightly to compensate for the weight that was pulling it down a little bit and the fa fact this fabric is very stretchy um so yeah it was just stretching down a bit too much so I've got those little seams there that I shouldn't have at the top of the shoulders but I don't think you would notice um, at all and I'm glad I made that adjustment but I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on I think it's a really nice classic little black dress um it'll be great for wearing in the summer I think with a pair of sandals or flip-flops or whatever so I'm glad I made it um and it's definitely a dress I'd make again in a different fabric maybe um so yeah I'm really really happy with how it turned out and it's just nice to be able to make up something you have in your mind that you really want to be able to wear and that's what I did with this Zoe dress. So that brings me to my final make that I've got to share with you in this video which is a knitted make and if you've been watching my videos recently you'll know that I've been knitting up a cat for my son and one for my daughter using the patterns from this book here which is the Knitted Cats and Kittens book by Sue Stratford. I've had this book for quite a while and if you're a long-term viewer you'll probably remember a couple of years ago I went through a phase of knitting up lots of different cats and kittens for my son and daughter and they each amassed quite a collection and then the book got put away until recently when they rediscovered it and got it out and had a leaf through and they each found a new cat they wanted me to make so I've been working on those two new cats and I've finished my daughter's now and I'm just putting the finishing touches on my son's so hopefully I'll be able to share his one in a video very soon but I thought I'd share my daughter's now and I made my daughter the one she requested which is I'll just find the right page in the book this one here tabby grey so she's a cute tabby cat um, in two different shades of grey with this sort of stripy legs and body and tail um, she's knitted in Aran yarn um, and she was an enjoyable knit, but quite fiddly. And I hadn't done much knitting for a while. I'd been mainly crocheting in the last few months. So I really had to get thinking and remembering how to do it. And I had to rediscover how to do intarsia to be able to sort of um, weave the two different yarns nicely together and create nice dense stripes that wouldn't sort of show up the toy stuffing when you stuff it so nicely densely woven together. And it was quite fiddly as well because it's knitted in Aran yarn with four millimeter needles which seem quite fine needles for Aran yarn so I, it was it worked out really well because it has ended up with tabby having a nice dense coat um but it was a bit fiddly and the sewing up was very fiddly um but i'm happy with how she turned out so it was worth all the effort i think so here is tabby gray so i pretty much um went for the same colors in the book because that's what my daughter wanted historically she's gone for sort of pink variations but she wanted tabby gray to be more of an authentic tabby cat in the two different shades of grey. So here she is. Um, she's got the little stripes on her arms and on her back and on her tail. I particularly like the tail stripes. I think they're really cute. And the little stripes that are sewn on on her head. So these little grey ears, little pink nose. And then she's got little pink toe beans, which I think are really cute. 
little whiskers, little blue eyes. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with how she turned out. It felt like it was worth all the effort. It took quite a long time, you know, with all the weaving in. It was, was pretty fiddly, but yeah, I like how she turned out. I think she's pretty cute and I'm hoping my daughter will love her too. So that is Tabby Grey. Um, it's such a fun project um, to knit from this book. There are lots of little pieces to make, so it's really easy to pick up and put down. Um, and then when it starts to come together, it's a relief because when all the pattern pieces are just there, having been knitted up, it doesn't really look like it's going to come together into the shape of an animal. So it's always a relief when they do turn out okay. So yeah, that is Tabby Grey. I got the yarn just from Lovecraft. It's a, um, I can't remember which brand it is. I'll link it down below. But it knitted up really nicely. Um, and then you just, yeah, just use a little bit of wool to do all the little features. And the, the wool that's um, used for the, the sort of little toe beans and the nose is a finer wool. It's a sport weight wool. I had that in my stash left over from other kitty creations. So that was quite handy because you only need a teeny amount for this cat. So I was glad to have that already there. But yeah, that is Tabby Grey, my little knitting creation for this month. And I'll hopefully share my son's finished cat sometime very soon. So that is everything that I've got to share in this video. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing all about what I've been making this month. Let me know in the comments below if you've got a favourite. I think mine is the Dovestone dress. Um, hopefully I have an opportunity to wear it somewhere soon. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for dropping by. Please do subscribe and press the bell icon, which means you'll be notified when I bring out future videos. But thank you again for watching. I hope you're having a lovely day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.